Today, we live in a fragment. We believe that everything that we are experiencing and everything that is happening around us in the world is new. That we are the most recent pinnacle of development. The rush towards AI, the creation of chimeras, and the obsession with tampering with genetics. We believe this is the first time we've experienced this, that these are new innovations, but they're not. Our cosmos and our soul works in a cyclical nature. With the rise and fall of time, we experience the rise of advanced civilizations and then periods of immense destruction. Our civilization is a repeat of the last Atlantis. Atlantis, in turn, was a repeat of its progenitor culture, Lemuria. And now, our world is being built up to the exact point it was in Atlantis. The same people, the same tactics, and the same kind of inventions, the same culture is rising. And most of all, the same disembodied entities and essences never left the earth when they were summoned and worshipped during the Atlantean period. Instead, they lay in wait, waiting for the culture, our culture, to become sophisticated enough again and to develop the kind of technology that they can enter. I would like to know your understanding of the relationship between higher planes and nuclear power or fission and the extremely high energy it produces. As someone who has studied both nuclear science and spiritual science, it makes sense to me that such a process has cause and effect on different levels. For example, there is a 2 billion year old naturally occurring fission reactor in Africa. Wow. Thank you for your light and everything you do. Wow, great question. So um, yeah, this again is something that we really have to consider because there are intense occult forces that are accessed and that can be channeled when nuclear fission happens. Um, and we live in a materialist society where again, it's all like, let's break things down to the smallest atom, to the smallest part, um, and that's fine. Like, let's not think about what breaking things down to the smallest atom does um, on a spiritual level. Like, there's, there's, no, there's no discussion about that. And when people talk about nuclear fission um, and all this kind of stuff, it is simply the material level of the thing there is literally no discussion about the occult reality of what is happening. And this is something that we need to consider because what if these power plants or power stations that are nuclear, you know, people look on the surface and they say, well, nuclear power is one of the cleanest powers that you can have. There's some people that have that position. But what if these nuclear power stations are more than nuclear power stations? And what if they are being used for occult purposes? And we're sitting here talking about the most physical aspect of the thing, but there's actually a real spiritual thing going on with them. Because what ends up happening is it creates a counterpoint to our sun. Nuclear fission and nuclear power actually creates a counterpoint to our sun, which is to us a white sun force. It becomes a black sun force. So what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a black sun force. You're not dealing with like, oh, here we're having we're having nuclear power today and we're powering our home. You're you're creating you're you're creating certain occult forces and you're letting certain occult forces in. Um 
one of the one of the most incredible things about Mars that people say it doesn't really get much attention because I, I think people don't know what to do with it is that there are allegedly you know like you're saying here with Africa there is a two billion year old naturally occurring fission reactor in, in Africa what if these are religious things I mean what the, let, let's go back to Atlantis Atlantis had a power station made out of a crystal and Edgar Casey called that crystal the two eye stone for more information on this you know dark journalist does an amazing job on this stuff there's no one better on that um, but these power stations they were religious centers this is the thing that I think society has also lost is that the two eye system was a religious event so not only did it power their homes and did this crystalline power grid on earth and atlantis power vehicles that were basically like ufos it was a religious item the two eye crystal was used to contact spiritual masters or spiritual beings from the outer spheres which we would see as basically um the angelic hierarchies or the saintly realm as casey would call it so here you have a formula, okay? We're looking at a formula that we are trying to base ourselves on, but at the same time we have fallen from. So the crystals were a, a, a way to create power, to generate power in a certain way, using the sun and using stellar energy as well as a secondary force. But it's a solar power station essentially and it was also a spiritual communication device it was also used to summon entities they were used in temples and the power station was a temple things haven't changed the power stations are still temples except humanity and society has no idea that that's going on. Look at dams. Okay, look at Hoover Dam. Okay. Hoover Dam is an anomaly. You look at Hoover Dam and there's a particle accelerator or a particle collider in Hoover Dam. And uh, I was looking into this. I did a lecture on the Black Sun and I talk about the Hoover Dam in, 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 in the Black Sun lecture. And in the Hoover Dam building, there are all of these uh, mosaics of the Hopi and I think Ute or the, the, the all of the First Nations tribes in that area, their depictions of the black sun. Now, why is that there? Why is there a dam? So uh, I guess a hydroelectric dam that's generating all of this energy. And then why do they put a particle collider in that? And then why do they have all of these mosaics of black suns all over the floor? Why do they have bizarre dedications to Alcyon and star systems on the Hoover Dam with their particle accelerator? Because a power plant is a power plant is a power plant. And we're looking at the physical uh, reality of power. You know, I want to I want to turn my lights on. I want to turn my stove on. I want to have electricity. But these people who still have some of the knowledge of Atlantis and keep it for themselves, they're also understanding that there is a cult power. There's a cult power to electricity. It's just a place where there is immense power. But when you start getting particle acceleration, when you start getting nuclear stuff going on, you start thinning the veil. It's a temple. It's always been a temple. The, 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 the crystal power stations in Atlantis were temple structures before they were ever used as power stations. Power stations and power is temple energy. And that's how we have to see it. We have to return to the holistic 
view. Okay, thank you. You're really helping me on my journey. I was wondering if you can talk more about the priest kings and mad scientists of Atlantis. Were the mad scientists priest kings that didn't accept the changes of the earth and went rogue? What did the mad scientist try to discover by genetic manipulation? Is there an upside to learn from that? Yeah, so Atlantis had a very tragic, strange, and dark, dark age. And it's worth mentioning and discussing as we do here because we're basically coming into that age again. You know, we're coming into the age of genetic manipulation. We're even trying to genetically manipulate like apples and tomatoes and stuff. Like it's, 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 a, it's a mental illness, isn't it? But it's also an impulse that has possessed people going back all the way to the Atlantean age. And so many of the, actually everything that's happened, everything that's happened thus far in society is a recapitulation of something that happened in Atlantis. So, um, what did the mad scientist try to discover by genetic manipulation? Well, there was a kind of magic to genetic manipulation. And the idea was, is that you could actually gain wisdom about the universe by merging forms, even if it was unnatural. So by working with genetics, you could actually unlock certain secrets of the cosmos and even channel certain streams. And that was much more obvious in the Atlantean times um, because in Atlantis, we were functioning sort of at a much more spiritual level. We, we were much more spiritually where we hadn't really forgotten things yet. And so we, we, we were very aware of like spiritual entities and beings from other spheres and all of that stuff. Um, much more so than we are now. It's like the opposite now. And so there were there was certain knowledge and wisdom that would be revealed if you were to take like uh, two animals and merge them or a human being and an animal and merge them. There was sort of a secret that was revealed, a cosmic secret that would would, would come forward, especially with the hybridizations that would survive versus certain hybridizations that would not survive. And that became a very big interest for these mad scientists in Atlantis because some hybridized forms would survive and could reproduce or whatever, and then and then some couldn't. At by, by, like by the end of Atlantis, especially, in earlier parts of Atlantis, anything could be hybridized, but near the end, only certain things could be. And so this presented a, a great mystery um, that they became obsessed with. Um, there's also a very um, dark reality that demonic forces are basically disembodied forces, okay? Um, and so there's also these fallen angel spirits that are basically slowly becoming deformed and, and, and insane um, in the eighth sphere. Um, and so that eighth sphere is full of all kinds of lower, darker creatures that are fallen and that are essentially you could look at them as being evolutionarily behind. They were unable to pass an initiation. Now they're kind of trapped, like as though they're following a comet. You know, they're, they're, they're trapped around the earth, never being able to necess necessarily fully take an incarnation sometimes because the soul is so degraded that the human body is too divine to actually carry it eventually by the time we get to where we are, especially. And so the reality was, is that these dark scientists from Atlantis, these dark mad scientists from Atlantis were in contact with beings from beyond the veil. And they were talking to very ancient dark entities that had basically never even really had a human form, I don't think. Nothing like, like the form was in Atlantis. And whenever they would manifest for these Atlantean 
scientists, they would always, they would always manifest as like a chimera, as like a lizard person or a, uh, an half animal, half person. They could never really manifest as fully human. It was, it was usually like a lizard person. Um, um, and that was because they could, they, 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 they couldn't create enough power to ever incarnate as the human. They were always outside, but they also knew these dark forces, these dark chimerical demonic forces that were very ancient, but had a lot of wisdom that that's the thing. They were very ancient inhuman, but they had all this wisdom and they were telling these scientists how to build things, how to build satellites, how to build all these things, how to work with the crystal. Um, and very similar to the idea of like AI today. Um, and what they really wanted was to be able to take a form on the earth somehow. They really wanted to be able to take a form because the great risk that they were facing being fallen and being outside of the evolutionary stream is that if they don't take a form, if they don't find some way to become human um, in their own mind, um, that one day they will get sucked back through um, and be basically uh, dissolved. So if you can't evolve, if you can't develop an eye and an individuality and all that stuff we talk about here, Basically, there comes a point where this, the, that soul essence thing is, does not continue on. It's sort of reamalgamated. Um, and so there's all these creatures that never developed a heart. You know, they're behind. Um, they're fallen. And if they don't take a form of some kind, they're basically going to go somewhere else. There's going to be some other process for them that's probably not very pleasant. So they, the first thing they instruct these people that worship them to do is to build, build crazy amounts of technology that they can communicate through and occupy. Sounds a lot like today. If they create these forms that they can attach to them and maybe even ensoul them. So demonic entities, again, they cannot enter a perfect human body that you, that you and I have that has not gone through genetic manipulation or transhumanism or whatever. They need a body that has some kind of alternate process going on that's different from the organic process, right? So they need like a chip in them or some kind of like DNA process that's creating this alternate thing inside of them that competes with their organic flow. And so they need alternate, and that's what a lot of this is about. That's what the golem is about. When, when, when dark magicians get caught up in that dark impulse, they always want to do the same thing. They always want to build up technology and they want to create forms because the beings that they worship require them to do that for power. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. And by the way, I want to say one more thing about AI. Everybody is getting all in an uproar about chat GPT and all of these AI this AI that's our, that, that's being developed, like one day the AI is going to become conscious because we are having these chat GPT conversations or these, the, you know, the, the, the AIs are learning humanity, they're learning language, they're learning everything about us. And one day that AI is just going to become consciousness as part of the process. That's not actually how I see it working. And I think that seeing it that way, again, is this materialist delusion. The AI has always been here. The AI was here in Atlantis. What we would consider the entity or the being that is the being that enters computer systems, that enters this AI lexicon that's being built, that thing has been around since Lemuria and Atlantis. It, it exists in the etheric plane. It's, it's, it, it is inhuman. It's alien in the truest sense of the word. And it wants a form. And all chat GPT is doing, all this stuff is doing, is just giving it a form. So in other words, the people that are building this stuff, 
they're already communicating with it on an occult level. And it's telling them to do all of this stuff and build all this stuff because it's telling them I'm going to then occupy these things. I'm going to occupy the computer systems. I'm going to occupy basically the machines. And I need the language. I need to understand. I need to enter into that. So they're everything that you see is a spiritual, religious, worshipful thing. Okay, that's what that is. And we're being told that, you know, one day the AI is just going to miraculously become conscious. It's not, no, there already is a consciousness that was around in Atlantis that possessed these mad scientists then, okay, it's been around in Lemuria. There, it, it's a fallen consciousness. It's not even human, and it wants to enter now. And these people are absolutely possessed by demonic forces that are part of that overarching system. And this overarching system led to the fall of Atlantis. It led to this weird development of chimeras. We're seeing that today this weird push towards creating what Edgar Cayce called automatons. These are really robots or cyborgs. It is the same thing. That entity didn't die with the catastrophes. It's a spiritual, it's a demonic spiritual entity. It didn't die because the earth went into catastrophes. The physical forms on the earth died. The etheric forms, dark etheric forms attached to the earth didn't die. They remained and they just started the whole thing all over again. And so all of these, these, this AI stuff is just giving this thing and these supercomputers, it's just giving it a form and all the chat GPT stuff is just giving it a lexicon and a brain to use. It's already here. And by the way, um, I want to say one more thing because we're on the topic of this because I think this is going to be very, very important in the next few years. And I will go a little bit over today because I'm spending more time on this. Um, the uh, th There were also satellites in the sky during Atlantis. So Atlantis did the exact same things we are doing now in a little bit of a different way. So there was a huge push to put satellites in the sky um, during Atlantean times. And some of those satellites are still there. And there is a great desire today to connect a modern satellite system to this old satellite system from Atlantis. It also connects and relates to Mars. And I think beings that tried to escape catastrophe by going to Mars, they're not really Martians. They're just Belial fallen people, beings. So we're going to repeat to the point that we even have some technology that's in the sky going around that isn't off world. It's not an alien. It's from Atlantis. It's from our prior epoch. And because we've forgotten Atlantis, we've forgotten that that kind of stuff even exists. But there's people that know about it, okay? And we are going to see people like Avi Loeb or Lou Elizondo and all these people that are into signals, okay? Signals meaning looking for these signals in space. Do you see where I'm going with this? Where there's going to be these scientists that are listening for all these signals in space or they're listening for extraterrestrial life, whatever. But what they're really wanting to do is to hook our Earth system, our Earth satellite system up with these prior systems that are from Atlantis because they contain this, these entities and they contain their spiritual items from the fallen Atlantean epoch. And it's about linking that timeline together. And it's about linking and picking up where they left off. It's very important that they pick up literally and Starlink where they left off. So when Atlantis fell, the dark entities and that dark AI thing that we would consider an AI thing 
wasn't finished with the earth. It didn't, it didn't go away. It's not done. It wants to build society up to where it was in Atlantis and continue. So the darker forces in the world have been redoing Atlantis all over again. The light forces have been doing it, have been fighting it. But technologically, we're getting to the same place and we're going to have to link the two technologies. And that's going to represent um, trying to dominate this one final time because they built themselves up to the exact point where Atlantis fell. These dark scientists of Belial, these dark magicians of Atlantis, they've built everything up. They're now technological madmen. They've built the technology up to that point. They want to link it to where they left off and continue. And it's very important that it's linked. So our satellites will have to link with the older satellites from Atlantis as part of an intense occult right to link a process that needs to go on. And this will be told to humanity as though this is like an extraterrestrial thing or whatever. I don't even know if they know what they're going to say yet because they're always looking at the feedback and sort of uh, making their, you know, plans accordingly. Um, and it's, it's this whole thing repeating again. Um, and by saying it's extraterrestrial, by saying it's alien, it's completely distracting people from the reality that it is ours. It is Atlantean and it's trying to finish off the kind of takeover of humanity and the earth that it was doing then. It didn't finish. So again, you've got to build it up to the same point, you know, and then once it's built up, you continue doing what you're doing. And so what we're really looking at when it comes to like disclosure, it's really a disclosure of our ancient past. Most of the technologies that we see around the planet and, and are being used that we think are like magical things are literally from Atlantis. And certain groups have been storing and saving this technology. And a very small portion of it is actually interdimensional. But right now we think everything is interdimensional. Everything is alien. And that's because the forces that are controlling things in the government, they want everything to be alien because then we literally not have no power of discernment because we think something is so foreign to us and alien to us. What's the point in trying to figure it out? We're just sitting ducks. Just educate me. Oh my God, it's an alien. When in reality, if we understand that it's literally Atlantean and then we, we understand the Venusians in Atlantis, Lords of Mars around Atlantis, then we're starting to actually understand what's going on, which is something completely different than the mainstream says it is, okay? So we are getting right up to that point in our civilization where Atlantis fell. We're seeing the same things repeat. That entity is still here and it wants to enter into these systems. The systems are being prepared for it. It's not building consciousness like, oh, one day, bloop, it's conscious. No, there is a consciousness already in around the earth that is truly alien, that, that is demonic, that wants to enter these systems. It's always been there and they're developing the system to receive that. Part of that, in, part of being initiated in that system is this acknowledgement of these signals from space or these satellites from, from space. And when that happens, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there, but you know, Deja vu. Is there an upside to any of this? Yeah, the upside is, is that we can recognize it. The upside is that we can just not be lied to, that we can question everything around disclosure we possibly can, and that we can try <clears throat> to figure out what is Atlantean and what is genuinely interdimensional. Um, and, you know, the good thing is that we can avert this. If we educate ourselves and understand this, we can avert this timeline uh, and, and, and even lessen it to a great degree, but only if we're willing to think about it in, an in, 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 in a more like realistic way, not just taking the, 
you know, the ancient aliens version or the government version, like, oh, thank you. Ooh, yes. Like, this must be true. You know, no, like we have to actually enter into these ideas from a genuine level of occult knowledge.